Howdy, everyone. My name is Oral Verma. I'm one of the TAs for CS120 honors this semester. Hi, guys. My name is Cooper. I'm one of the course leads for CS120 honors this semester as well. So in this presentation, we're going to explain to you what CS120 honors is, what, we're, what the class looks like, and what the general scope of the class is, and then how you can enroll for the class. So what is CS120 honors? Well, as the name implies, this class is the honors add-on for CS128. Um, it's a zero credit hour course, and you'll either receive a satisfactory, unsatisfactory grade, or if you're a James Scholar, you'll receive your HCLA credit by taking this course. Um, it's 100% student run. Arul and I are both undergraduates, and so are all of the other staff members. Um, and in this, this course will cover content that's very similar to what's taught in CS128. However, while CS128 teaches you concepts um, in C++, we'll instead utilize the REST programming language. Um, and finally, in the latter half of the course, there will be a group-based final project where you'll gain practical experience um, developing and deploying projects in REST. So let's start by talking about what REST is and why you should take CS120 honors. So REST is a C++ adjacent programming language. In other words, it's a very low level, very high security programming language focused on memory management and uh, low level latency. For seven years, Rust has taken Stack Overflow's top spot as the most loved and most popular programming language. And the reason most people take this course is because Rust is a super cool language. It's very popular among many of the top companies in improving the security and latency of their code. And this is a great way to learn about more topics in CS. And you can create a lot of interesting projects through Rust. So many people who take this course are looking to meet, make a lot of really unique and interesting projects, along with a lot of their similarly passionate classmates who they can work together with to create something really amazing. So how is this class broken down? Well, it's very similar to CS128. There is four major components of the course. There's the lectures, the homework, the MPs, or machine problems. And then finally, there is a final project. Um, so for the first eight weeks of the course, we'll be releasing lectures on YouTube for you to watch whenever best suits you. Um, we'll first talk about the basics of Rust. You'll get an introduction into the syntax of Rust and how to set things up and how it works, et cetera. Um, and then we'll talk about Rust's memory management system. So um, things like ownership and borrowing um, and then we'll talk about concurrency and parallelism. Um, we'll introduce you to threads and some basic systems programming concepts. And then around the time you start your final project, we'll, we will be releasing um, special topic lectures to either show you more advanced topics in Rust, or we'll show you what's possible to do in Rust by introducing you to different libraries or crates. So the next big part of our homework, or part, part of our course, is the homework. The homeworks are short assignments that help you practice the lecture content and get more comfortable with Rust as a whole. They're only two a week, and they're short assignments meant to be for 30 minutes, totaling to an hour per week, and they only occur for the first half of the semester. Any of these homeworks can be done in our office hours as well, so you can work with a staff member to help when you're stuck, and they're meant to help you familiarize yourself with course content and set you up for success in the following parts of our projects, such as the machine problems and the final project. Um, next is the machine problems, or the MPs. We'll have four of these throughout the semester, and these are more involved assignments that will require you to take about one to two hours to complete. Um, two of these MPs will require you to implement popular algorithms, um, these being the k-nearest neighbors algorithm and the MapReduce algorithm. And then the other two MPs will have you build out a simple application on the near terminal, um, these being a calculator and the hangman game. The final part of our course is the final project. This is a six to eight week long group project done in groups of two to four people of your own choice. We grade primarily on functionality, style, code base quality, and creativity. Some of the best projects are also featured on our website in our Hall of Fame. So if you've done something truly exceptional, it'll be displayed for everyone to see on our website. And any potential employer or any potential interest can be referenced to our website to display your project in its full code base and its full display. So how do I sign up? Well, it depends. Um, if you're a James Scholar, you have to submit your HCLA form um, with Professor Nowak 
as the instructor, um, and you do not have to register for the course in self-service. If you're not a James Scholar, then you have to sign up for this course in self-service, just like you do any other course. Um, the course name is CS199-128, and the CRN is 56131. Um, regardless of if you're a James Scholar or not, um, everyone should join the Discord and also fill out the onboarding Google form, um, both of which are in the description below. Cool. Thank you for listening. Thanks. We hope to see you in class soon. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.